of course, we want to talk about them. So let's go ahead and turn these back on. And we'll go ahead and start with the cam view over here. So you're going to see as I'm rotating my model, this view is going to change with me. So now it's like, okay, in the back of my model, here's the front of my model. And then if I click these little red, blue, and green options here, you're going to see, okay, green is top and bottom. And you just got to click them uh, once or twice. You can click the front and the back and the left and the right. Of course, in ZBrush, you can also hold down shift and snap to the orthographic views as well. As you're tumbling, you can just hold down shift and snap. Alternatively, you can also go up here to the cam view and just click and drag on the model there. And that'll also rotate it around. And if we go over here to the preferences, we have our cam view here, we can make it a different size. And you may be thinking, you know, the bigger it is, the more intrusive it is. Why would you ever want it this big? And that's uh, for two reasons, maybe. If we go out of edit mode and say, always switch, and then hit control N to clear canvas. And let's say we're in here with a primitive and we have our Z sphere uh, selected. Go ahead and drag that out on our canvas, go into edit mode. If you hover over edit mode, you'll see the hotkey for edit is T. So you can just hit the T key. And if we have our cam view off, and we go over here to make poly mesh 3D. I don't know where the front of this object is. It's kind of um, ambiguous. I can turn on X symmetry and it's like, well, I can start sculpting, but this could be the back, it could be the front, it could be upside down. It's really difficult to tell. In the old days, you had to go over here to your floor and just toggle your floor on. Uh, again, if you hover over this, you'll see that shift P is the hotkey for floor. And you can see, okay, Z forward is the blue line and then Y up because the floor is on the bottom. And then now I know this is the front of my object here. So if I want to go ahead and sculpt the face, I'm in pretty good shape. Now with the new cam view, you can just have the cam view on. It's like, okay, there it is. There's the front of my object. There's the back of my object. Uh, it's fairly obvious. Now, if I go over here to cam view and I click next, you're gonna see there's a bunch of different ones loaded in here. And in fact, I can go all the way over here to the skeleton. And now I can use this as reference. So if I wanna sculpt a head or I wanna sculpt a skull or something like this, I can actually use this cam view as my reference as I'm working. In fact, if you keep clicking uh, next, You'll actually get to the planes of the face view. So this is really useful if you're going through uh, and you want to, you know, look at your proportions and the uh, volumes and the planes that uh, make up a face. You can use your cam view for that as well. Once you're done modeling or you want to maybe knock that size back a little bit, you can always click on a slider as well as just clicking and dragging. And then you can type in a number and we'll just drop that back to 128. If you've already progressed pretty far with your model and you don't need to know, you know, you're not using your cam view very much anymore, again, go over here, turn your cam view off and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and turn that cam view back on and I'm gonna just uh, tap on this model we were working with earlier. And here's another orthographic cam view thing that might be useful for, uh, to you. So you can hold down shift and you can snap to these orthographic views just, uh, just so you know. If you hold down shift and you start dragging and you let go of shift, it'll actually rotate just in that camera view along that, that plane. So you can go to the side view, hold down shift and then let go of, hold down shift and start moving and then let go of shift and you can rotate again along that plane view.